Welcome back again, friends, to another Large Family Meals of the Week, where I show you the various meals I am cooking up for my large family of 11. Yeah, we also get some candy done this week. Look at us, I am proud of us. We do some bone broth, and we also do a bunch of mandarin oranges, so stay tuned for that. But now, let's look at how our big bathroom renovation is going. So the bathroom renovation has nothing to do with all the mega mama meals and big batch cooking, but this is a huge undertaking. So this is our 1963 Rambler that we are slowly working through. You know, we got our mega mama kitchen done in summer 22, which has given me room for all my dream cooking projects, right? But we made it through with the baby kitchen. Yes, we did. These bathrooms have absolutely been fallen apart. You can look back at some of my old videos. And you know, I, I joke, every time we took a shower, we lost another tile. Uh, so anyway, they completely gutted this bathroom and have started again. We are putting in Travis's dream shower. Lots of folks wanna know, what it, where's Travis's big uh, dream shop for his cars and all his car projects? Well, he's getting his dream shower first. It is made for a six foot six, <laughs> man and uh, all his hopes and dreams and hey there's my gardens we will be doing projects out there coming soon good things will be coming up with that and we have our onions and our garlic that my 12 and 13 year old planted this fall so anyway that was the update on where the bathroom was as of this day and here I'm showing you a case of orange juice I got from sharp shopper those were three for a dollar and some golden eggs on this morning. I'm doing hard boiled eggs for breakfast. I have the water boiling, there I go, always scooping out <laughs> four extra cups of water. But I'm going in and I'm, I'm doing 32 eggs on this morning because what we don't eat for breakfast, we will have some hard boiled eggs ready to go. And I also have a kiddo who really likes making egg salad. So those will be ready for him to make that. And so now we're just having our fun little sharp shopper orange juice containers because again, for three for a dollar, why not? There's my favorite beverage right now. I got two cases of that kombucha from Costco and I have been working my way through it. And now, oh look, mama is gonna get her steam facial this morning. We are going to feel the steam, yes, going into our pores, <laughs> cleansing steam. And uh, mama is gonna take a swig there before I start peeling these eggs. I also have a kiddo helper on the side there coming up who likes to cut the eggs for me and puts a little bit of butter on each half and salt and pepper and serves those up. Now I have, I know myself, I usually eat two. Many of my family members will eat two, some will eat three. And so we just get them all peeled and then they're ready to go. Having hard boiled eggs ready to go is also a great snack option. They are also fantastic on salads. And like I said, we've had a lot of egg salad here lately. Of course, egg prices, I don't know. In my area, they're coming down where the big box of 60 eggs got all the way up to $32 a box. It is down to $19.96. I think when I did the math on my calculator the other day, which I can't do, I'm not talented enough to do that while I'm doing voiceover, but uh, I think that was like $3.98 or so a pound or $3.96 um, a dozen excuse me, and I've seen you can also buy like local organic eggs. The John Henry General Store has had those for $3.99, which is helpful. And so here I'm just cleaning up the toddler breakfast. I got everybody outside in the sunshine because we're actually having a little of that here in Virginia. Uh, and this is just, you know, does this look familiar, mamas? Yes, it does. <laughs> but anyway, thank goodness I have chickens and pigs. So even the floor food scraps get used. There we go, getting in our little scrap bucket there. Um, also, as far as our eggs, our chickens have started laying again. Of course, you know, day one, we got one egg. They're warming up, so there is hope there. And now I'm showing you, I have a stack of books that I am reading through with my younger kiddos. My absolute youngest is about to be two, and then my younger kiddos I was reading through this stack of books with are ages five, eight, 
and was nine, but now the nine-year-old just went ahead and turned 10 on us yesterday. Uh, but anyway, we were having some game time with them while the older kids were working on some other school as well. And lately with the younger kids, we've been enjoying playing a couple games of trouble every day. My five-year-old is convinced that who is ev whoever is the red color is always the winner <laughs> so we're trying trying to see how that works out long term and we also usually do a round or two of Candyland. and so we were playing without the double trouble rule we missed that and now we've added in when you when you land on double trouble so we're getting all our rules down and continuing on from there having some we totally count this as fun and learning during our homeschool time i try to read to the kids of all ages every day I have another stack of books that I'm reading to the whole crowd, um, and then I also try to have time with both groups. And here for my mama lunch, I am roasting some Brussels sprouts. I do have some family members who also enjoy the roasted Brussels sprouts, so I am just filling up my plate. Hey, roasted Brussels sprouts in olive oil may not be for everyone, but it's uh, but it's my thing. And that's two of those uh, real good enchiladas. And also, here's a quick shot of dinner that night. It was some leftover beef roast and gravy, some potatoes, and then the rest of those Brussels sprouts. And hey, we are here back at what they got done in the bathroom on this day as well. And so today I'm showing you, that's my nice deep closet and I wanted to keep that. They got, I don't know, what's this board on the shower? Some kind of, you tell me in the comments what that's called. It's some layer, some layer. Maybe that's the waterproof drywall, something. But they got that done on this day. There's everything, I don't know. I know they did things. This is me telling you. <laughs> They worked all day in the bathroom, I think mainly on that shower. They're gonna tile that, and so that's a big deal. Maybe that day they also cut the hole in the floor. So much happens with this bathroom every day. I really should have done, bad YouTuber, I should have done a dedicated start to finish bathroom video. So for extra fun, you'll have to watch through my large family meals of the week videos <laughs> to get the bathroom updates. So here we are the next day. We were at homeschool group. We packed a whole bag. I had a kiddo do a whole loaf on wheat bread of PB&J sandwiches. We packed clementines. We packed some granola bars and animal crackers from Sharp Shopper. The, um, and also you see those veggie straws there. Um, oh, and there's a cute little craft. We're doing ocean, an ocean theme this year. In our homeschool group, every year we have a different theme. And so that's some of the cute crafts the younger kids did in their classes that morning. And then there's my mama lunch, THM approved. Ha ha, I got my triple zero yogurt, my light laughing cow cheese, some turkey. I packed an ice pack. I have my wasa crackers there. Yep, there they are, right on cue wasa crackers. I take those with me. Uh, but anyway, here we are. I have been needing and wanting to do so much beef broth and we at least get that going. I have canned beef broth and chicken broth in the past. I just run through so much broth so often, but we are gonna try to get on top of that. How many jars of broth will I need to have enough broth for a year in advance? I don't know, but let's see if I can just make enough to like keep up with it. Here are bags of bones from the full cow that we bought. I have several bags, and so I'm going to do a bag full in each roaster. And we are going to get these cooking down on this evening. My hopes and dreams are to use my new All-American canner. It's the 941 mod model that I keep singing the praises about. I keep singing the praises about that canner. It can do up to 19 quarts at a time. I have now heard from some of my YouTube viewing friends who tell me that they've gotten up to 20 quarts in it. It just depends on the size of the quart jar, You know, sometimes the diameter of the wide mouth or the regular mouth or the brand of the canning jar affects how many jars I can actually get in there. So what I am doing is I am spraying down both of my roaster ovens with my Misto olive oil spray and I'm going to dump a bag of bones in each roaster oven. Now these roaster ovens function 
as my regular oven would do. I know that some folks take their bones and roast them in their oven first before cooking them down. I feel like I'm kind of doing two birds, one stone since I'm putting my bones in my roaster ovens. I have had times where I put them in a separate oven first and then I put them in my Instant Pot or in a stock pot. Uh, but anyway, I'm all about cutting corners when I can and this is how I am doing this big batch of bone broth. And there I'm showing some of my kiddos there about the bone marrow on the inside and the little bit of meat that is stuck on the bones. We get all those nutrients out and so I just go ahead and do a full bag in each roaster oven. I feel like I have about 10 or so bags of bones still left. We should have many good days in the near future where we continue on our broth making quest. I also want to do a whole bunch of chicken broth, but I'm starting with what I have quickly available right now with these bones. I just get these urges to make broth. I mean, don't you just say, hey, I wanna make some broth. I do still, I try to put my roaster ovens on my cutting boards there. They don't heat up so much at the bottom, but again, I just do it for countertop protection there. And now I'm going to start filling each roaster oven with water. I'm going to walk back and forth there and get a couple bowl fulls in each roaster oven. I believe these are like 20 and 22 quart roaster ovens. I have some various spices that I'm going to throw into each and of course salt and pepper and a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And so here we are, we have the roaster ovens going now. Oh, and looky here, so we are downstairs and I'm showing you here for a moment how my canning shelves are starting to come together. I still have some boxes of unused jars that we'll get to from all my canning hopes and dreams. We have our applesauce, our potatoes, carrots, corn, some different beef and some pork products. I know some of you have suggested that because of earthquakes and such that I keep my jars in boxes and so I am considering doing more of that. Not that we are an earthquake prone area but there was an earthquake the other day earlier this week um, on the border of Virginia and here I'm just showing you other shelves I have that we are going to fill in the coming months getting going on this canning journey. And so now, story of my life, haha, ha, I am washing off more jars. I know I could put them through the dishwasher. The thing is, my dishwashers <laughs> at different times are full and are running. The length of the cycle, there are shorter rinse cycles, uh, but it still takes time. I feel like I can get my jars in some hot soapy water and rinse them and set them out in almost the same amount of time. Um, especially, like I said, if my dishwashers need unloading and such. I'll just do it this way. Who knows what evening this is, what activities were happening, what in the world was going on. And I, my mama joke, I know I'm not unloading any dishwashers. So I, I, got, I got folks who can do that, right? Uh, but anyway, for whatever reason, I have my reasons and they, and they are mine and they are valid. That's another shirt, right friends? It should just say mama reasons or I have my reasons. I'm the mama, I have my reasons. I think these things and sometimes it's just prep for another day. I was working on getting my rack out of the oven, which I learned how to do. I had one of my sons figure that out on Thanksgiving for us. And so I did it myself, yay. But I was working since I had my roaster ovens with my bone broth working on getting in my jars in my oven and making sure that they would fit. Let me say this because context right these roasters have been going for over 24 hours at this point so happy new day happy new evening right and so I am pulling out the bones and we are going to peel 
any meat or any other little pieces that are still on the bones. There's also many big chunks of meat that were on the bones. So we're just going to get this meat picked back off and get it back in the broth to continue cooking. Cooking down this broth, so this was about 40 quarts of broth or so, just thinking of the capacity of the roaster ovens there. And so with the broth cooking, 24 to 48 hours is what it's going to end up being. And then I also need to let the broth cool so I can skim all the fat off the top. This ends up being a three to four day project. I say actually if we count the canning time, let's say four days to get all this broth done. Now of course I'm living life and homeschooling my herd of children and running to activities and doing all our different things while working through this broth. Uh, but you will see coming up, I do take a dedicated day to do the actual canning of the broth. And coming up, we're going to can a bunch of mandarin oranges as well. You'll see that coming up here in this video. And so I'm just stirring the broth. I'm going to do the same thing with my other roaster oven. I'm going to remove, I'm going to remove all the bones and then again, peel off what, any extra meat clinging to the bones that I can. And then I'm going to continue to let my broth cook overnight. And then the following day, Mr. Travis, yay, Mr. Travis is going to help me get the two big roaster ovens. We put them in the bottom of our Mega Mama, Mega Family Big refrigerator and let them, I did let them cool down first, of course, but I let them sit for another 24 hours to get the fat to come to the top and we skim that off. And so here I'm just pulling out if there's some more marrow within the bones there. I scoop that out as well and I peel off again all the little meat chunks which I used many jars of this broth in my homemade mashed potatoes this past week. I'm trying to think, oh I made uh, beef stroganoff. I used the broth in that as well and it was delicious broth. So again, as, as I like to say, I'm proud of us. And I chopped up a bunch of onions here that I'm going to add to my broth as well. I mean, yes, perfect world. I should have done that just from the beginning, but these are going to cook uh, for another 12 hours or so. So it, it'll all work out in the end. And here we go with our weird Virginia weather. We're having our only real uh, snow day that we have had so far. Now we thought we were gonna get one to three inches. It does not even turn out to be that exciting. The kids were excited though. They had set out a bowl to collect snow for snow cream. And uh, yeah, none of that happened, but it was pretty to watch coming down the windows. And so here is a box of mandarin oranges I had got for an awesome deal at my local John Henry General store. So I'm already, hey, don't you like my little uh, talking hand, my Vanna White hand? So I'm already cooking up ideas in my mind of how we are going to can those mandarin oranges. I read through my canning books. I watched 
Rose Red Homestead, that woman with the gadget. I always enjoy her videos as well. And she had some videos from a couple years ago about her doing her oranges. And so this is the next morning now. The broth has continued to cook for us. And I'm going to do a great big breakfast scramble. I have some onions growing, as we see. I have several pounds of our sausage from the whole pork that we bought. Uh, there, some freeze-dried peppers that we did in the summer and I also had a box of hash brown potatoes, the organic potatoes from Azure that we're going to use. And I just wanted to cook up a big breakfast scramble on this morning. So I cook up, I believe I use about four pounds of sausage, which one of those little packages is a pound. And so I get the sausage going in one of my big cast iron skillet pans first because happiness is sausage. My plan was to mix the sausage and the cooked potatoes and scramble a bunch of eggs and throw some cheese in there and just do a, a country breakfast for everybody. And uh, most of my folks really, really loved it. And by the following day, it was all gone. So here I am just chopping up the sausage well. Of course, now that I have canned sausage in my canning pantry, I wouldn't necessarily have to even cook up the sausage, but that's okay. We, we can do it all the ways. That's what the organic potatoes look like there from Azure. I have a couple boxes of those that I'm working through from this fall. So I'm going to cook those up in some olive oil. And so now I just dumped in a whole jar also of my freeze dried squash. I'm just adding the squash and the peppers to the sausage that I cooked up. And now, yeah, I'm just stirring them up there, adding just a little bit of water actually to it. And then I'm also working on cooking up my potatoes. Now, in a perfect world, I do like to, you know, dirty as few dishes as possible, but this is a big meal. But I'm transferring my sausage from my big cast iron pan to my really happy red Dutch oven because I still have to scramble those eggs and get those potatoes in there and add cheese. And I already outgrew <laughs> two of my big cast iron pans here. So now making the best of it and we are going to load up this Dutch oven almost to the tippy top. And now, yep, there's our pans. And we'll move on to scrambling our eggs. And I'm just doing a, a old country scramble, not even adding any milk to it, doing some handfuls of cheese there. And now we're gonna add in all the eggs.
And here we have our breakfast bowls and the toddler plate to serve it all up in. And I have dinner set out. I'm going to do some pork roast on this evening and also add on a bottle of zesty Italian dressing. And we will just let this pork cook all day. So look at me, yay, we meal prepped. That's all that's left. I made that, it's a big 16 quart Dutch oven. And there's our scrapings at the bottom. So uh, yes, for sure, this this was well loved. Mm -hmm, that's all that's left. A couple servings there for a few more meals later. And uh, yeah, but breakfast was also, breakfast was done, dinner was on slow cooker. And now for lunch on this same day, I'm doing some sheet pan nachos. So I just filled two trays with my chips I got at Costco, covered them in some shredded cheese, and I also layered on some black beans that I had canned. And I'm just gonna get those in there. The kids can have those with additional toppings and sour cream and such. If I would have had my canned ground beef now, I could have added that already. And here we are. Now we're on to dinner that evening to go along with our pork roast. We did some green beans and we did two sheet pans there full of roasted potatoes. And then this was, let's see if I can get my lid off the pork roast that I had cooked in the slow cooker all day. I just put it in that container because it's easier to store leftovers that way. But here's our dinner for this night. And of course we do have some good heavy leftovers from that. We also opened some jars of canned applesauce. We have our dinner table ready to go. And bathroom update, okay, this was a big day. Do you see anything different in the shower there? I know there's no light in this bathroom currently, but they got a lot of the tile done. I think it looks so good. I told Travis I feel like it's going to feel like a big fancy hotel shower. So they did the tile. Remember, this is Travis's dream custom shower. And so now here we are. Of course, I could not lift these pans, but Travis just took out both roaster ovens for me. This broth has sat for 24 hours, and so all the fat has just easily come to the top, and I am spooning all of that off of here. So easy to do it this way. Like I say, it did make it take a nice long, nice long process, but that's okay. The broth, the homemade broth at the end of it will definitely make it worth it. So I just try to scoop out the little bits and then of course I take the big bits out and scrape it all around. And then I use my slotted spoon. I've had several folks ask me lately where I got that spoon. I think I got this purple slotted spoon at Bed Bath & Beyond a few years ago. And so now I have my roaster ovens going again with this broth. I'm gonna get that broth heated up and I'm getting my big canner ready to go. So this is on a Friday afternoon when I have more dedicated, focused filming time. You know, through the week, I try to get little, like I call my large family meals of the week clips for you of a bunch of the food I'm serving and sometimes some other little adventures, like a new bathroom. But on Fridays and all day Saturdays, I get to film my bigger cooking projects. So on this Friday, we are going to can that broth that we have been processing over the last several days. I feel like almost all week, but you can see all the meat chunks in there. And it's just a nice dark brown color and very delicious. It's our homemade beef bone broth. And we're going to also, there you go, I've warmed my jars in my oven. My last big canning day, I did my jars in my roaster ovens, but again, those were in use this time, so I will definitely use my oven also. But what I wanna say here is we're gonna also get to processing and canning those mandarin oranges. And so now I am ladling my hot broth into my hot jars, and I have my water in my canner heated up as well. And I'm going to wipe my rim and get those loaded into the big canner.
And so I'm trying to fill several jars at one time. Again, hot jars, hot broth, hot canner, but I need seven, no, I need more than seven. I need nine or 10 jars to fill the bottom of that canner. And so I was trying to assemble a line, everything. Of course, you're watching this super sped up, but I was hoping that I could get a bunch of the jars full and then get them over to the canner quickly and everything still be nice and hot, which I will say it works out wonderful and we don't break a jar. So that the thermal shock, that's what we're always looking for there with the temperatures, everything works out well, but you can see that nice dark broth color in the jars that I'm filling. And yes, it's getting dark outside, but we are going to work through these canning projects this evening. And Mr. Rooster Cookie Jar is there supervising all of our work. And so I have some folks in my kitchen that I am chatting with and uh, just having a good old time while I'm filling all these jars, which is always fun. And so I dump in the last little bit of broth there, just trying to get uh, all the little pieces there. We got so many quarts there from that canner load. I know lots of people are asking me with my canning videos how many jars I'm getting, and I am failing on telling you <laughs> the end results of those jars. Uh, I could go down to my ca ca pantry canning room, but anyway, I will try to get better at telling you, you know, I got 12 quarts from this and, you know, 57 quarts from that. Uh, but anyway, here we are filling this jar now. I'm going to wipe it down and I'm just, again, assembly line. So I'm going over all the rings, all the little lids there. What are we calling it? Rims. Rim is the word. Rim is the word. Wiping those down. I did get some good recent comments from some canning, canning viewers that told me they keep their vinegar in a bowl so they can just dip their rag in it quickly. And I'm like, there you go. There's a workflow step that can help me. I also like to have my lids and rings ready to just quickly put on like as if they were one piece, but didn't have that done at this moment. But again, the jars are hot. The broth is hot. There we are doing our rings. The canner's hot. Go, go, go. This didn't take me too long. Probably, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so to fill all those jars of broth. But now I have to do the walk back and forth loading my jars in my big Mega Mama canner. I will also say, I know you guys like different reviews on different things going on in this kitchen. So Travis did the under cabinet lighting with these strips of lighting. I think he said they were $75 each from Lowe's. He even installed outlets inside the cabinets so that these lighting strips could be plugged in without hanging down. And uh, anyway, you see, it now looks yellow under my cabinets. We were able to choose from like a bright white all the way to a very bold yellow. I had kept them on bright white. By the way, there's the canner now and those wing nuts that I have conquered. And here's my 30 quart bowl full of mandarin oranges. Um, just telling you, the light strips we got have not worked out well because now they are stuck on yellow, the remotes aren't working, they will not change, and so Travis is gonna have to redo those. So anyway, there you go. How many months did we get out of them? It is now February, so August, September, October, November, December, January, February, I'm counting on my fingers, about six months or so, and that's it, kaput. He needs to do something different there now, which he is, and so I am getting my jars in some water bath canners here because we are going to water bath quarts of mandarin oranges. I have several family members who love mandarin oranges and this will be our first time doing our very own mandarin orange canning. So yippee for doing new things and I'm getting both the water bath canners heating up there. And so now we are going to start the process of filling these jars. Now I also did a very light sugar syrup. Very, very, very light. Um, oh wait, I'm confused. Look at me, I'm still canning broth. Hold on a minute. We'll get on to the oranges here in a minute. Oh yes, we are. Uh, but I am using up the last of the broth here in this other roaster oven. 
I'm also on the stove, I've currently got going a very light sugar syrup uh, from the Ball Book of Canning or National Center for Food Preservation. They have different syrup amounts. I mean, you don't have to use any sugar at all. You can use water, but for the canning tutorials and what I have read on doing oranges or citrus fruit in general, most suggest at least the lightest syrup possible um, because the water just washes everything out. So I did, um, I want to say I did, <laughs> don't want to say the wrong thing here, but it was something like four cups of sugar for 20 cups of water. Um, again, it was, it was less, <laughs> a little less than the lightest, lightest light syrup recipe that I found. But back to the broth, you can see the broth has garlic in it floating around. I did add that at some point and some on the onion pieces and the meat pieces. And so I'm just continuing to get these jars full to get going in some other canners also. And of course, I always give myself away. You can always tell when I forget to add vinegar to my candy batch. I feel like that's something I just always forget. But come on, JMRL, remember, if I throw some vinegar in there, the jars will not get that film on them. But when I do forget, I then wipe them down with hot soapy water washcloth and usually some vinegar as well. And here I am showing you the different light syrups and ultra light syrups from my ball book of preserving there. And um, the one that they suggest, which again has to do with the flavor, and I make the, the ultra light syrup as possible. And I'm still working my way through canning this beef broth, but we are getting through it. And hopefully I have a few jars, I don't know. Will it last me a few weeks? I guess we'll see. And so here I'm getting the lids on all of my jars now. Again, I'm just trying a bit of assembly line style. Let me know when you do a lot of canning, if you do it one jar at a time, or if you do it assembly line style. I'm going back and forth <laughs> with, depending on what I'm canning and what else I'm working on, on how I'm doing this. But this is how the broth is going down. I do realize earlier I also said I was getting this going in different canners. 
and now that I'm watching it, I am not. I am doing all of this in my All American 941 model, and so I do get another full canner load though, and so that means I should have about, oh, let's see here, about 32 to 34 jars of broth total because again, I've still been babying this canner and I still haven't filled it quite as full as I could. <laughs> so we would have had about 38 jars or so if I would have really, um, I mean, I could have fit one of those in one time. Anyway, so we got those in there and now we are waiting for the steam to start venting. There we go. I am working on canning the mandarin oranges and there's my extra light sugar syrup that I'm doing. Again, I want my family to have a good experience with these mandarin oranges and uh, they do like canned mandarin or we, we like mandarins in all the forms right fresh mandarin oranges and then also just the cans of them we have some of those in our pantry they've never had it from a jar before so there we go just added my weight on and now i'm going to look how pretty they are i'm going to start putting these quart jars into my water bath canners except want 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 now i know what happened with that one when I put it in, because the water's really hot, when I put it in because the water's really high, I let go of it and it was burning my fingers and I kinda, it, it just, it hit the bottom. And so it didn't take long to where I heard the snap and uh, I let it fall to the bottom from where my fingers started to burn. So happens and I lost a jar because of it and now I'm going, I'm going to deal with that. So, yep, I'm getting getting my tools of the of the broken jar trade going. I'm also living on the edge because I keep I need to just throw it away or give it to Travis to fix for me. I have several jar lifters, but the one I keep using, the one that's been out, the little pin comes out of the side, and so that's also not good, Jay Morrell. Want, wanting future trouble, I guess. Ha ha. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to scoop these oranges out and the glass jar at least it broke in like you know one nice piece for me at the bottom obviously i'm not going to even give these oranges to the animals but i am going to clean them out of this canner but now here we are great success i am pulling the oranges from the canner now onto the counter And so now I'm getting another water bath canner load ready with my oranges. I had to dump out my second water bath canner there and get that going with fresh water after my jar broke. But I was able to get run my front canner there. And so this time hopefully we will get both of those going. Here we go now we're putting that back canner to use and I am working on unloading the pressure canner from the other big load of broth I'm gonna take it on a, a journey through the kitchen over to some more boards to set on but looking nice good job mandarin oranges
here we go next day yay and I am going to on this day and I have a whole other video for you we're gonna can up a bunch of sausage and a bunch of different pork roast cuts also on this day I am going to wipe down these jars with vinegar because I didn't put vinegar in my canner the first time and so the jars on the top level don't have the mess on them and then that jar I just don't I don't know what happened to it so that's not going to be used um, but these other jars this is what is left and I'm going to wipe these down and make them all pretty and then I'm going to label these and get these put away downstairs where they go and start a brand new dedicated Saturday where I am doing pounds and pounds and pounds <laughs> not not 600 pounds but many pounds of the homegrown um, forest raised really hog that we bought and that's many pounds of sausage and many pounds of pork roast cuts so friends thank you so much for watching the bathroom whole new brand new bathroom progress and hanging out with me for several meals and adventures on this week and also working through the several days to get all these many many quarts of beef bone broth home cooked and canned and then also all of those mandarin oranges i appreciate you taking the time to watch and i will chat with you in those comments below coming up next we're going to have a big mega canning day canning up all those different pork cuts. I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.